Yeah, Coach, I know you're with the with the tight ends right now. Uh, how uh, healthy has Sam, Samuel Wheeler looked? I know he got banged up last year. Is he full go yet? Yeah, he looks good. Um, he's doing a lot of good things for us. Uh, I know that obviously he got banged up last year, but he, he he's moving around well and, and doing a great job in the weight room also. So, What's one thing you kind of want to see out of him this spring and, and kind of want to get accomplished to see him take that step forward? Just to make plays consistently. Uh, he, he obviously uh, transitioning from being a quarterback in his career and uh, he's fitting in well. He's put on some weight. He's dropped some uh, drop some fat, gain some muscle, and he's continually doing that and changing his body. But just consistently catching the football and, and making plays when they come his way is probably the biggest thing uh, that we're looking for uh, as far as his performance. I'm going to try to get his name right. Daniel Amater Bebe, you're a new transfer you tight go. end. Yeah. Uh, what do you expect him to provide for you guys this year? I know he's kind of had an injury history as well, but he seems to be healthy at this point. Uh, first, I'd say just in general depth, but just playmaking ability. Uh, I know you know ha we were fortunate enough to have Briley uh, come in last season, and and he was able to fill some depth uh, for us there, and obviously make some plays for us. Uh, a guy that's played a lot of college football, so uh, Daniel in the same way, and and in a lot of different ways, uh, just his journey and his path of having been on 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 a lot of different teams. Uh, seen a lot of different schemes, played a lot of football. So his experience, I think, is going to be be something that will uh, will be a, a big time thing for us, uh, and also just uh, the ability to make plays. He, he's very smart. Football intelligence is off the charts. Uh, his movement skills. He's great in the room. Uh, he's great at practice. Has great practice habits, uh, and he loves the game of football. So I think those are some things that are going to provide us um, a, a very unique. Uh, a unique opportunity to have him on, on our, in our program. And lastly, I know you're not with the wide receivers anymore, but we've heard a lot of Keenan Garber flashing and kind of rising to the surface a little bit this spring. Uh, what's been the, the most noticeable change that kind of has him in the conversation now? Just his comfort with our offense. I think having a, a younger kid like that, all these kids have to understand uh, that you have to learn the system, you have to get comfortable. Uh, and, and he's do doing that. He's playing his speed a lot more consistently. So he looks good. Like I said, he's flashing. He's always flashed. He's always had that. You see him run across the field, and, and he's, he's one of our faster players on the team. Uh, but in, ter in terms of playing fast, no different than any player. If you're comfortable with the scheme, if you're comfortable with getting lined up and understanding the concepts and, and the defenses you're seeing, you're going to naturally play better and play faster from a football standpoint. So uh, his speed off his speed on paper is now correlating with his uh, transitional speed um, playing the game of football. Thanks, Coach. John. Yeah, Jason. Just what kind of a an adjustment has it been for you moving from receivers to now fullbacks and tight ends? Uh, it's it's been a good adjustment. It's it's been one that when we first talked about these changes. Uh, it was one that I, I really wanted to embrace. It's, it's something that uh, when coaches kind of asked us some things that we might be interested in, I, I told them it'd be fullbacks and tight ends, uh, particularly because I've never coached that position. Uh, and it would give me, a, uh, again, getting closer to the box, closer to the action uh, in terms of the run game and things like that. So uh, it, the, the biggest change has just been working more closely with the offensive line with Coach Riley, you know, doing some things with those guys. Uh, that you're going to want to do from a day-to-day -day basis in some blocking schemes and things like that. Uh, and, and it's fun just kind of the things that we do with them in such a multiple way as far as the receiver um, split out type things uh, that those trans transitional skills have been good because of my background with receivers. So uh, I like it. It's been fun. Uh, it's a cool group. It's a fun group. And it's a group that really enjoys getting better. What are you seeing right now? We talked about some of the older guys or you did just a second ago. What about the younger guys at your position group, particularly at tight end? Uh, guys that have kind of stood out right now. I mean, I know I know Connor Fox is a name. Uh, he, he's played a little bit, but I'd still consider him a younger player. He, he, he stood out uh, quite a bit. You know, Cody Stuffel being – uh, and because we, we continue to double rep, as you guys know, a lot of these guys are getting opportunities. And that's the plus and, and one of the positives of how we practice and the structure of our program that I'm able to see Cody uh, get multiple plays throughout a practice and he's not just standing there. Uh, you know, Ben Sennett is a kid who is doing a lot of good things for us. 
uh, you know, at both the, the true F position and then the Y position. Uh, I like what um, I like what Jax Deneen is still doing for us. Uh, Christian Moore is doing some things really well and is a physical kid. So the younger kids are, are really coming into their own. Uh, and, and, you know, we obviously have some more practicing to do and uh, a lot more time until we get to that first kickoff. But right now, as, I, as it stands, I think the group looks really good. And, uh, you know, it's a fun group to coach. Maybe this isn't a fair comparison to make, but just because they've both been transfer tight ends for you guys, but how how different or similar is is Matter Bebe from what you guys had in Bradley Moore and what he brought to the table there? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would agree, kind of an unfair question, but, you know, and because I didn't work directly with Bradley, I didn't sit in the room with him, but I think some of the similarities are that they both have played a lot of football. Uh, obviously, both completely different as far as their their paths to, to to leading 2K State, but I think that their experienced players are smart players. Uh, that's the probably the the thing that I would say is a similarity. But different body types, different different athletic movement skills in, in that way. Um, and so I, I'm really really excited to see Daniel uh, continue to progress in our system. Like I said, he's very smart, has has great football intelligence, and his movement skills are really good. Uh, he's got good, got good range uh, and things like that, and he's a natural ball catcher. So, uh, and and he's he like I said, he loves the game. He really comes in. He, he does a good job taking care of his body, and you can tell that he goes about it in a, in a very professional manner as far as what he does and, and and what he wants out of the game of football. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Yep, no problem. Last one here, Fitz. Hey, Coach, take us back through uh, exactly how the position change came about your coaching position change well it was if I can remember correctly the timeline of it it kind of happened right before uh Christmas break I, th I think you know we were we had some time to kind of uh, over Christmas break kind of talk about what what the changes would mean uh, how we felt about them and things like that and I got to spend time with my family and and really just get away from ball for a while um with what coach had presented to us prior to going on break and um, and really, it, it kind of stemmed from a lot of things, just as far as just uh, personal growth in the profession. Um, you know, not only for myself, but a, a lot of us, and we're all in, in different uh, in different periods of our careers and things like that. You know, from an offensive staff standpoint, but uh, really just came about just being something just had you know just different different looks and giving fresh perspectives on, on both position groups that obviously have changed between myself from receivers to tight ends and, and mess from uh, tight ends to receivers. And uh, so it's been really cool. You know, it's, it's been cool bouncing different ideas off of, off of mess, uh, him talking about some, some different drill, drill work uh, with me about re receivers and, and vice versa, me to him about tight ends. So uh, it really came about just coaches asking what we wanted, you know, out of our own personal careers and, and probably me in more particular uh, to understand the game a little bit more and to get a different look and perspective on the game and then go into 2021 season with fresh perspectives, which I think help in, in, in any organization and uh, in, in any company and, and obviously any program, uh, you know, when you get different fresh eyes on different things, you have a tendency to, to, to have some more, you know, win some more uh, battles and successes in, in different areas. So um, I think it's just part of those deals where you start to restructure things and, and really give a fresh look. And, and it's really been uh, a really positive change for us. I know you guys put tight ends and fullbacks in the same room, but they are kind of different you know, body types, different guys. But my question is this, what's it like going from coaching receivers, which are like Corvettes to fullbacks that are like old pickup trucks that one brings? <laughs> I don't know, man. The, the funny thing is what I've done, and um, just as you study the game, you know, the the fullback for the 49ers, you know, they call him Juice. Uh, you know, that statement that you just said, uh, old truck, he, he probably would disagree with just what <laughs> I've studied him doing, just because he probably considers himself a, a athlete Corvette. And and he's one of, he's the premier, he, when I look at any position I've coached, um, especially with a lot of the technology that we have nowadays, I, I we study and watch some of those guys that are doing it at a very high elite level. And, and at the fullback position, he's one of them. 
And so I'm able to, to watch film of him uh, athletically, um, different things, how he gets aligned, how he shifts, how he motions, uh, how they utilize him out of the backfield. And so I like to talk to those guys who would, you would say are your, your stereotypical fullbacks in the room in terms of still you have to be athletic to play this game and have great movement skills. And, uh, and that's what a great example he is uh, to show a, a college fullback, man, this is what it looks like to play the game uh, at a high level at the fullback position. And it is a unique position, but uh, I, you know, you try to have guys that, that, that can do multiple things and there's going to be guys that are better at doing some things than others. But when you can show them examples of the best in, in the world doing it and, and see how they can try to emulate or take little things like that to add to their game. I, I think that uh, you can, you can kind of, uh, you can soup those guys up a little bit, man, and, and and maybe put a under the hood that you might have a have a different engine under that hood. You know, might might look a little different on the exterior, uh, but they they can do some things to to make sure that they uh, are giving themselves the athletic uh, advantage as best as possible. And kind of fitting that is Jack Stanine, who is a very unconventional good athlete. When you when you kind of see him walk on the field, you're like, "What's this kid doing out here?" Right. Uh, first of all, what kinds is what shape is he in right now? What's his conditioning status, and does he really kind of shock you at some of the things he can do athletically, considering he doesn't kind of fit the normal? Yeah, I mean, and Jack's like you said, he's he's very athletic. Uh, and he's a kid that has great feet, uh, great movement skills, and so. And, he, and to answer your question, he's doing really well. He's he's embraced. Coach True's doing a heck of a job down there in the weight room with, with his staff. Uh, these kids have really embraced um, some of the things that we're doing that may be a little different down in the weight room. And, and for all of us, it, it had to be an adjustment. We all had to embrace uh, some different things and embrace change, whether it be the stretch or, or different things that uh, we're doing in, in, in pre-practice and, and before we even get to – to you know, lining up and doing things as far as uh, as far as what the stretch looks like and the commands and all that. So, uh, at the end of the day, uh, Jax is really taking to nutrition. Scott Troush is doing a heck of a job in nutrition with his staff and his student assistants. And so, uh, Jax is one kid that we want to make sure he continues to take care of his body, and he's he's embraced that and he's and he's challenged himself to do that. And so I'm excited about him. And athletically, you know, he's going to continue to get more explosive and, and quicker and, and stronger, faster and those things. But uh, he's playing fast and he, and he looks good.